Welcome to Casting Class, the engineer's podcast for all things metal casting. Casting Class is brought to you by Batesville Products, the manufacturing experts who have been casting, machining, and polishing custom aluminum components for over 75 years. Today I have Rachel Weber and Stephanie Randolph with me. Rachel and Stephanie have looked at a lot of aluminum castings during their time at Batesville Products. At Batesville Products, we cast aluminum A356, and a lot of people ask, how this alloy compares to other aluminum alloys. So today we're going to take a look at some common aluminum alloys in the casting industry and see how they compare and contrast. Now a fair warning before we get into it, we are not metallurgists, but we have collected some information from trustworthy sources. So with that, Stephanie, to kick us off, some aluminum alloys are better suited or more common in one casting process than another. Can you walk us through the different casting processes and what aluminum is most common in each? Sure, Mary. Common aluminum alloys for castings range from the 200 series to the 800 series, excluding the 600s in this case. The 600 series are better suited for extrusions or forgings rather than castings. There are a lot of casting alloys. It would be difficult to list all of them, but majority of these alloys are in the 300 series because this alloy makeup is great for casting. Uh, three common alloy grades that we want to focus especially on today are aluminum 319, which is typically used in sand casting and sometimes permanent mold casting, A356, which we use for permanent mold casting, and A380, which is typical for die casting. We always say these three alloys are extremely comparable. If you're from the fabrication world, I'd say that these alloys, uh, when used in castings, are an equivalent to the 6061 series. So why is it that the 300 series is so great for metal casting? Um, I believe it's in the formula, Mary. The first number in the alloy designation refers to what's added into the aluminum. For instance, in the 300 series, the aluminum alloys contain silicone with a little copper and magnesium, which is great for castability. So Stephanie, you mentioned that 319 is used in sand casting and A356 in permanent mold and then A380 in die casting. So why are certain aluminum alloys better suited for certain casting processes? That's a great question, Mary. Um, each aluminum alloy has a unique property, and these properties interact with the casting method. For example, die casting is a pressure injection method, and A380 is a good alloy under pressure to fill molds quickly and completely. Also, the casting process can affect the mechanical properties of the alloy. For example, you're likely to see more porosity in a sand casting than in a permanent mold casting because of the mold difference and pouring method. Thanks, Stephanie. So before we get into the mechanical and physical properties of these alloys, let's talk a little bit about heat treat too, because heat treat can also change the mechanical properties of the casting. So Rachel, we recently did an episode together on this. Can you tell us which of these alloys can be heat treated and how that might impact our comparison today? The three aluminum alloys that we're focusing on today that can be heat treated are 319, A356, and A380. Some of these alloys are almost always heat treated while some are optional and some are almost never heat treated. It just depends on how much of an effort the heat treat process can have on the casting. So for the 200 series, it is a good example of almost always being heat treated. Heat treatment reduces the stress, improves hardness of the casting alloy. It makes machining the casting much easier. For instance, you might hear a machinist describe chips from machining an unheat treated 206 casting as gummy than machining a heat treated version. As for the 300 series like 319 and A356, all of them can be heat treated, but for most of them, it's optional. They don't always need it. So for example, in-house we cast A356 and about half of our castings are heat treated and the other half meet requirements as is and don't need the extra operation. A couple of alloys that are hardly ever heat treated so are 443, 512, 707, and 713. This could be because heat treat doesn't really have an effect on the casting, so it's not worth adding the operation. Thanks, Rachel. 
So for the rest of the episode, we want to focus on the three common alloys that Stephanie had mentioned earlier. Aluminum 319 in sand casting, A356 in permanent mold casting, and A380 in die casting. But like Rachel said, it's important to keep in mind heat treat because the mechanical properties of the casting may be improved if the casting's heat treated. So some of the properties we're about to discuss are based off the alloy being heat treated while others are as cast. So just keep that in mind as you're listening, we will determine the difference between them. I also wanna note that a lot of these figures that we're about to discuss come from the Aluminum Association, which is a very trustworthy source. But keep in mind that the values are meant for comparison only, so the actual values will vary based on the part, the casting process, the purity of the alloy, all of that. So with those disclaimers out of the way, Stephanie, can you guide us through the mechanical properties of A380 in die casting, A356 T6 in permanent mold, and 319 with and without heat treat in the sand casting process? Absolutely, Mary. I'll give it my best. Under the mechanical properties, we have four benchmarks. uh, Tensile strength, field strength, Brunel hardness, and elongation. When comparing tensile strength, which is all about how much stress an alloy can withstand, A380 is the strongest set of right around um, 47 KSI, uh, followed by the A356 T6, uh, which is about 37 KSI. Aluminum 319 T6 is about 31 KSI, and 319 T5, we've got noted it, 25 KSI and 319 with 23 KSI. Um, So a higher tensile strength castings are strong and durable and by using a high tensile strength um, alloy you can build a durable product with less material which then optimizes the weight and cost. It's definitely a focus for a lot of our customers. Um, Those are generally used in the aerospace, marine, defense, construction industries for an example and those, those industries have very harsh conditions that require high tensile strength alloys. Heading over to the yield strength, um, A356 T6 takes the cake with a 26 KSI, um, followed by an A380 with 23 KSI. 319 T6 is right about 20 KSI, and 319 is 13 KSI. Yield strength means more structural integrity, which is important in industries such as oil and gas, mining, infrastructure, and machinery, for example. Like all high strength tensile, uh, high yield strength alloys can make durable products with less material leading to weight and uh, cost savings there, Mary. And while this podcast is about aluminum, I want to point out that the tensile strength and yield strength of A356 T6 is generally stronger than an unheat treated um, class 30 gray iron casting. Interesting how uh, heat treat plays into that. Absolutely. Next, we have the Brunel hardness, uh, which often means more wear resistant. It's a higher durability and better machinability. Um, alloys higher on the Brunel hardness scale are common in construction equipment, agriculture, and the utility industries. In a test with the 500 kg F load and 10 millimeter ball, the Brunel hardness of A356 T6 was the highest at around 7 to 100 kgfs, followed by A380 to around 80 to 85. Then 319 heat treated with the landed in about 60 to 95. And finally, 319 un, unheat treated uh, with about 55 to 85. So the same pecking order as the yield strength. And the last property to look at is elongation. A high elongation percentage indicates good ductility, meaning the material will stretch before it breaks. This is especially desirable in applications such as piping and wiring and cabling. You know, brass and bronze have a, um, a great elongation percentage, but alumina isn't too bad either. We found that A356 T6 has an elongation percentage of about 5% in permanent mold casting, and A380 has about 3.5% um, in die casting, and 319 with or without heat treat is about 1.5% in the same castings. Again, these numbers can fluctuate in real life scenarios, but um, you can follow these va- values for a general comparison, I believe, um, just between the alloys, Mary. Thanks, Stephanie. Not only is it interesting to see the comparisons with aluminum, it's nice to hear how other metals might compare in there too. So that was nice. So those were the mechanical properties. What about physical properties? Rachel, can you give us a guide to density, electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, and then the coefficient of thermal expansion? Sure, Mary. Let's start with density. 
keep in mind that density of a casting will vary depending upon the casting process, boundary practices, and part requirements. But as a general comparison, our research found that density of aluminum alloys is really similar. An A356 T6 permanent mold casting is a hair less dense at 97 thousandths per cubic square inch than the A380 die casting at 98 thousandths per cubic inch. And a 316 sand casting isn't far off at 101 thousandths. I think the density of aluminum really stands out when you compare it to other casting alloys. It's lighter than iron, zinc, brass, and bronze, which is good news if you're designing a lightweight product that needs a higher strength. Let's move on to electrical conductivity. A356 T6 typically has an electrical conductivity of 39% IACS, and aluminum 319 has a 27% while A380 has 23%. This property may be good to know if you're designing electrical enclosures, grounding components, or any renewable energy equipment. If you're comparing this to other types of metal, A356 T6 has a higher conductivity than zinc ZA12, brass SAE40, bronze 85, and class 30 gray iron. Thermal conductivity, again, A356 T6 has the highest thermal conductivity at 3600 CGS and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. 319 at 2600 and A380 is 2300. Again, this is higher than zinc, brass, bronze, or iron alloys I mentioned. And when is that high thermal conductivity helpful to have? And so in industrial machining, renewable energy systems, HVAC systems, and electrical applications, thermal conductivity is critical to prevent overheating. If you're looking for a good heat dissipation, the design of the casting can also play a role. For example, we make an enclosure with fins along the walls that help the casting transfer heat. Another thermal property to keep in mind is the coefficient of the thermal expansion. In industries where parts are subject to a wide temperature range, such as airspace, a low CTE helps parts maintain dimensional accuracy and structural integrity. In some applications, it's important the material CTE matches the expansion properties of the components it's assembled with. So CTE of A356 T6 and 319 is the same at 11.9 millionths per degree Fahrenheit from 68 to 112 degrees. Is slightly different at higher temperatures than the CTE of A380, which is uh, 12.2 millionths per degree Fahrenheit. And we're talking millionths, so these properties are extremely similar. Thanks, Rachel. So it's interesting. A lot of those um, properties were very similar between the three alloys, but maybe a little different between other types of metals. So those are some mechanical and physical properties, and we talked about how some aluminum alloys are better suited for certain casting processes over others. But are there any other differences between these alloys that you two want to discuss or differences between aluminum and other casting materials? Mary, I absolutely think it's a good time to talk about secondary operations. Um, we've discussed heat treat and machining, but there's also finishing that's involved. Uh, for instance, on a permanent mold A356 casting, you're going to get a better surface finish than a 319 sand casting just because of the casting process and the mold material. Um, but with aluminum alloys, you have the option to do polishing, and powder coating, or anodizing as an alternative to any finish that you may want. Awesome. Any other final thoughts? No, I think we covered a lot in here. Very technical information shared. 
and overall this has been a very educational podcast so thank you rachel and stephanie for walking us through the differences between aluminum alloys thank you're you. welcome mary thanks for listening to casting class the engineer's podcast for all things metal casting for more episodes videos and guides check out batesvilleproducts.com see you next month